Welcome to the Memorizing Pharmacology podcast. I'm Tony Guerra, pharmacist and author of the Memorizing Pharmacology book series, bringing you mnemonics, cases, and advice for succeeding in pharmacology. Sign up for the email list at memorizingpharm.com to get your free suffixes cheat sheet or find our mobile-friendly, self-paced online pharmacology review course at residency.teachable.com forward slash p forward slash mobile. Let's get started with the show. Okay, today we're going to do anticholinergics, and our mnemonic will be BUD, the wide-eyed tachycardic cat. And I'll explain all of this to you um, as the issue with anticholinergic and cholinergic is not necessarily getting it. It's remembering all seven, or more actually, of the adverse effects that you have. But if you can get those down, then you are in good shape. So first, let's talk a little bit about Bud the Wide-Eyed Tachycardic Cat. So B-U-D and C-A-T are all going to stand for something. So it's going to stand for blurry vision, urinary retention, dry mouth, constipation, and hydrosis, which is no sweating, and tachycardia. The problem is we have a B and a T in our mnemonic. So we have to use tachycardic to remind us that the T is for tachycardia and the B is from blurry vision because of dry eyes. And then we want to say wide-eyed because medriasis is just not going to work in the mnemonic. And finally, we're going to put this cat in the desert. Now, he's just on some tan carpet, so we'll say that that's the desert because anticholinergics are all about dry and when we get to cholinergics you're going to see it's all about wet okay Okay, to the mechanism of action anticholinergics inhibit acetylcholine capital a capital c little h a neurotransmitter the issue we have is that it has two synonyms muscarinic antagonist which we sometimes call anti-muscarinics and parasympatholytics So we want to keep those three straight. We want to keep those three together because we're going to have the opposite three when we get to cholinergics. Okay. All right. So what are the adverse effects? What does BUDCAT stand for? So again, B for blurry vision. That's dry eyes. U for urinary retention. Again, dry. We're not urinating. Dry mouth. You might see it as xerostomia. Constipation. If we pull water out of the bowel, going to plug things up. And hydrosis is a lack of sweat. And again, this is our tachycardic cat, so tachycardia. And finally, medriasis, M-Y-D-R-A-S-I-S for wide-eyed. And it's nice, it has the word dry in the middle to remind you that all of this is very dry. So why are we starting with adverse effects instead of indications? Well, you're going to hear all the time that, oh, that drug has anticholinergic properties. Watch out for that. And what they're saying is that maybe in the elderly, um, something like diphenhydramine or Benadryl you don't want to use because it causes sedation, but it also has anticholinergic effects uh, causing many of these problems. So the reason we start with adverse effects is because we're now going to go to indications. So how do you take a quotation fingers bad thing and make it good well the blurry vision or dry eyes is one of the many things that happens when somebody has cholinergic crisis from an organophosphate so the pesticides and things like that atropine is the antidote we have urinary retention so if we retain urine that becomes an indication if we're trying to treat overactive bladder with oxybutynin tolteridine solifenesin if we have dry mouth or xerostomia, okay, we might want to reduce salivary secretions and we might use glycoperolate. Uh, constipation is just a placeholder. I don't know why you would want to use this exactly for constipation. There are other things you can use. Uh, anhydrosis, okay, so atropine okay, can help with hyperhidrosis or profuse sweating. And the big one because it causes tachycardia, it can help someone who is very bradycardic. So medriasis, wide-eyed, 
You might want to dilate the pupils. Although we don't really use atropine, we use something called homatropine. Uh, we get that it's a madriadic, which is basically something that's going to dilate and make those pupils wide, just like our cat. So if you were using atropine IV, you know, you would use it for that bradycardia, bronchial secretions, or in that cholinergic crisis with the organophosphates. So atropine as the antidote. Okay. But let's look a little bit more at that OAB and, and some mnemonics that we can use with some of those drugs themselves. So a normal bladder, the detrusor muscle is contracting when the bladder is full. However, if an overactive bladder, we have detrusor muscle contracting before the bladder is full. Right. Well, what can we do? We've got medications that have an indication for overactive bladder. So oxybutynin is ditropan or oxytrol, and oxybutynin kind of rhymes with keepin, urine in. Okay. Tolteridine is detrol, which takes the word letters from detrusor and control. Solifenacin or vesicare is fensin, urine in, if you're kind of looking at the stem. And then vesica is Latin for bladder. So literally it is vesica care. They kind of just squish that word together. And then darafenacin is enablex, where you're again fencing the urine in with that stem, but you're enabling an exit from the house because many people with overactive bladder really feel uncomfortable uh, going out. Uh, they are worried that they're gonna have an accident and things like that. So the nice thing is, is when we go back to our adverse effects for these four drugs, we see that we have our cat back, right? You might have some blurry vision, urinary retention, dry mouth, constipation, anhydrosis, tachycardia, madriasis. But these drugs are getting more specific for that urinary retention. So the idea is that maybe some of these side effects would be quite minimized. There are some other indications that we have with anticholinergics. For example, scopolamine is called transderm scope, and uh, often it's used in motion sickness. So you put it on for um, maybe a cruise or something like that, where maybe it, it's something that, that really bothers you. Uh, but what would we really expect with side effects? We'll get to that in a second. And then ipratropium bromide or atrovent. Uh, this is something that uh, it bronchodilates, but really relaxes the smooth muscle of the lungs. And when we go back to adverse effects, sure enough, who's there? Well, it's Bud. So we might get blurry vision, urinary retention, dry mouth, constipation, anhydrosis, and tachycardia. So again, the thing with anticholinergics is, you know, getting down that, okay, here are the medications. We've got atropine, we've got these uh, glycoperolate, got these drugs for overactive bladder, uh, scopolamine for that motion sickness, and we've also got the you know generic atrovent or which is a neb, um, which is ipratropium. And the idea is that okay, we've got all of those, but we already know what they're going to do uh, because we've got the adverse effects down for anticholinergic. In the next section, we'll go over cholinergics. Disclaimer, as always, the information is provided for you for informational purposes only. It's not intended to provide, should not be relied upon for medical or any other advice. Consult with a medical professional if you have a medical condition. Thanks for listening to the Memorizing Pharmacology podcast. You can find episodes, cheat sheets, and more at memorizingpharm.com. Again, you can sign up for the email list at memorizingpharm.com to get your free suffixes cheat sheet or find our mobile-friendly, self-paced online pharmacology review course at residency.teachable.com forward slash p forward slash mobile. Thanks again for listening.